Okay, I, I'm talking here with a gentleman named Dan here at the uh, Occupy uh, Albany, and uh, I just been asking people, you know, uh, uh, out of all the things, what would you say is the one thing that kind of put you over the top and brought you out here today? Um, one of the really important things that, okay, so I, I have radical politics. There's a lot of people have very particular kinds of politics, and I realize more and more that the best things that we could do in society was not just to say, well, we have a conflict, and how do we, like, mediate that, or how do we solve that conflict, but that the conflicts that people have between these different positions is a place where we can create, like, brand new kinds of solutions that that I wouldn't have thought of, that they wouldn't have thought of, that makes everyone more, like, more, everyone is happy with the outcome. Uh, well, we realized that there wasn't a platform to do that at, because unless you were talking into one kind of, like, mic or for talking this one kind of like group you're just gonna hear the same thing over and over again okay you, you say you have some radical politics could, could you give me some specific examples of what you think you have uh, radical ideas uh, I think I have some radical ideas so uh, and it, it's a, a testament to how things have gotten that this is I would consider this a radical idea is that uh, I fundamentally believe that the goal of human society is to get to know each other and to take care of each other and to nurture each other and the way in which we've arranged political the political organizations the economic situation is basically pitting human being against human being and that that is antithetical to why we built society and it's the opposite of what society is good for and so that any kind of economic policy I don't want to put a name on it and say like it's a, it's a you know modified capitalism I don't want to say it's socialism I don't want to say it's like libertarianism I say any system that we develop has to at its core fundamentally be measured by how well it takes care of its most vulnerable people and that no other system should be allowed no system should be accepted okay well you mentioned libertarian I, I tend to think of myself as a, a libertarian and that's why I said I have some radical positions uh, it's like specifically uh, I'm in favor of legalizing all drugs which which a lot of people consider t totally off the wall you know they say well marijuana is okay but you know cocaine and crack and heroin you, you can't do that uh, I mean would you consider that a radical position or I mean I think it's an interesting position that there is on one level like, okay, yeah, maybe th these things should be legalized, but the problem isn't necessarily whether or not they're legal or not, it's the social system that things fall into. I mean, I think I have particular feelings towards Ron Paul, but I think one thing he said that was very wise, he said, like, look, people just, if given the option, people will just say, I'm going to go do heroin today. Like, that's not how people function. But it, in some respects, does ignore the fact that the kind of world we currently live in is one in which people find that the only way to comfort themselves is to shoot up heroin. And only way to comfort themselves is, is to smoke way too much marijuana, or drink too much, or eat too much food, or all these things. And so really, the problem isn't whether or not drugs are legal or not, but what kind of system do we live in where people need to overindulge in these things to the level that it becomes harmful to themselves? You fix that problem, whether drugs are legal or not, it means nothing. Like, it's just, it's not a thing people will have to take care of, or have to engage in. Uh, are you spending the night here in one of the tents, or are you just here for the day, or...? Uh, like a lot of people here, we have obligations both inside and outside of the occupation. Uh, and so, unfortunately, as much as I would really, really love to be in the park all the time, day and night, uh, I share my time between here, between my teaching duties in Troy, uh, between my, my studies in Troy, uh, and I try and, and use that kind of back and forth motion I'm doing to either bring things out of the park to people who don't have an opportunity to come to the park, as well as bring stuff from outside of the park, supplies, news, information, connections into the park. You say you teach in Troy, uh, Troy High School, is that where you teach? Or? Oh, no, no, I, uh, I, I'm a graduate student. Oh. And so like you do both uh, uh, helping out the college load, as well as kind of like, well, when people need, okay, well, graduate student, come, come tell us about this topic. You go and you take care of that. And I find that uh, I'm, uh, that, as things go on, people need information more and more, but very particular kind of information. Well, I was wondering, uh, I, the reason I asked about if you're sleeping down here, they're, they're predicting 7 to 10 inches of snow tonight. And I'm just wondering that the people who are, are spending the night down here about how they're going to be able to cope with that tomorrow morning uh, or tonight as the snow's coming down, if their tents are going to withstand it or like that. So That's a good question, but uh, we have been on it for a couple days. We have both a weather group as well as different outreach groups that are like, okay, so when the snow comes, because the snow will come, what do we do? We, I think people keep in mind that you know, this was settled several hundred years ago by people who also had to sit out in the snow and deal with it. So it is possible to be in this kind of weather, even as the weather gets worse than it's, it's expected. 
The trick is trying to relearn those skills and to share those skills quickly so that when the snow starts coming down, people are like, okay, I know what to do. The people are most dangerous in the world when something happens and the only things they know what to do is to like harm their neighbor. We're trying to keep people away from having to do things that are like kind of dangerous to themselves or to others in order to stay warm and stay out of, out of, out of harm's way. Uh, what, what would it take you to just declare victory, say, gee, we've won, we can go home now? Um, that's kind of the funny part about it is that it's in my mind, it's not really about you get in this idea of like utopian thinking. It's not about a point. There's not a place where we fix politics. That politics is a process. That the, the all of human society, it's this long, long process. And what becomes dangerous is when people come along and say, "Did it? We were here. We figured it out." Like when you go on the news or the, on TV, people say like, "America already is perfect." And I'm like, "If this is perfection, I reject that. I think we can do way better than this." And so. Uh, I think no matter what happens, the most important thing is that people remember is that we were, the, the victory is in the process, the victory is in the learning, the victory is in that you get to go home and realize that you've done democracy in a way that you have never done it before. That the old way of like, one, three, four years, boop, piece of paper. Two years later, boop, piece of paper. I don't like what happened, here's a stick. That those, those ways of dealing with, with political action are so shallow and I've had experience with this much deeper, meaningful thing. That's the victory and that no demand or no change in the society itself is as important as that you change people's understanding of how to be political and how to do politics in America. Okay, thanks for talking to me, Dan. Thanks Appreciate for that. To me. All right.